Hello, Minders Marbles. Uh, I have a bit of a problem replying to you. I've made several attempts to reply to you with perfectly innocent words, but it won't let me reply to this comment you made. I do have an earnest question. Let me copy, actually, and copy that a second. Put it into this to make it easier to read. Okay, so... So you said, Mindless, um, I do have an earnest question. How did you make sure the cart compressed the spring by the same amount each trial? When you held the cart, was there a certain consistent compression length of the compressed spring? It's not relevant to the test of friction and spring efficiency since we can see the cart move for quite a while, but I'm still curious. So my reply is... Oh dear, <laughs> now YouTube won't let me reply to your comment asking an earnest question. And this time, clicking sort by newest does not resolve it. Let's sorry, look at my typos. The screen is so far away, which is why I'm having to view in WordPad. No, it doesn't matter. I don't know <laughs> Forget it, Steve. Okay, let me see if it allows me to post it as a separate comment altogether. It didn't. Anyway, so... This is a slightly amended version. I was trying to cut out words like suck, blow, with reference to the vacuum cleaner of an air track, <laughs> in case YouTube interpreted the words suck, blow as some pornographic thing. <laughs> you never know, do you? What on earth can it possibly object to? It's ridiculous. Anyway, here goes my reply. Thanks for asking. The identical springs were simply fully compressed each and every time. So each turn of the coil was pressed against the next one. They compressed down to about an inch, maybe a tad less, but yeah, near enough an inch. They were top quality springs, aviation grade, I think the eBay listing, listing categorised them as. Uh, new old stock for some aircraft refuelling purpose. Uh, to be absolutely honest, my first reason for trying it out was out of frustration at not being able to find a video where they do this on an air track. I was just curious exactly how low friction air tracks were before I built three of my own. Uh, which I do still intend to use, by the way. Now I have tracked down the real problem I was experiencing. I discovered by sheer chance that the vacuum cleaner I had been I bought brand new for this sole purpose needed the filter cleaning. The reason I hadn't suspected a filter was because it had an unusual feature that is supposed to clear the filter. Somehow, I've no idea how it's supposed to work, but you press this button and uh, you, you wonder what it's doing. Well, now I know it's doing nothing. <laughs> anyway, a mechanical button which I had repeatedly used, assuming it was doing its job of cleaning the filter, which I'd never even seen yet. It clearly does not work very well, if at all, because when I eventually opened it up to check, it was as clogged as it could be with a build-up of lint-like fluff, like a blanket of thin felt that I could easily peel off, you know, and generally just brush away the dust. And hey presto, it returned back to its original power. I originally said its original suck-blow power. <laughs> Made no difference to YouTube. Uh, the hours I'd wasted previous to that checking every seal of the hoses joined together so that the vacuum cleaner could be could be located in a different room to cut down the noise factor. I was wrapping tape around and all sorts around joints to no avail really. It was just that pesky filter lowering its power. So when Gary says air tracks are buggy, he isn't speaking from knowledge or experience. He's just making a pathetic excuse to stop Tony UK. I amended that, you know, because in case he didn't like me saying Tony UK. He's just making a pathetic excuse to stop Tony UK from actually f fulfilling his promise to buy one and resolve matters. I'm certain that air tracks work brilliantly where noise isn't an issue for neighbours, so that sufficient time can be spent checking everything is working consistently to iron out teething troubles. They are remarkably easy to make from aluminium, uh, rather than the plastic type I built following a teacher's money-saving publication. I'm excited about using my twin air tracks when I can make space. Space is the other big issue. I live in a tiny house compared to some, so I would constantly banging into the air track when I walk past the end sticking out, ruining the careful setup. They obviously have to be perfectly level. The plastic type get warm from the vacuum cleaner air, so I was concerned about running for too long in case the plastic began to sag. Hence the metal type I then built, but no one has ever seen used those I don't think but they won't have to wait too long. I think it's important that we don't try to make air tracks do things that they were never de that they were never designed for. 
like compressing springs, which does predictably cause the gliders to bash against the air track itself, rather than take the harder path of compressing a spring. I guess you could say that they take the path of least resistance. The light gates are the toughest issue if use of them is rushed or overstretched or misunderstood. They aren't as straightforward in my estimation as we tend to imagine. Even Walter Lewin, I amended that in case it objected to that, even Walter Lewin, using professional ones, conceded there was a smaller margin of error. He explained in some detail while calculating the error bar. So I will have to rebuild better light gates. I've already spent a few hundred quid on multiple digital timers. So much for Gary's wild claim intended to disparage me for supposedly having given up on air tracks. I haven't. He's effectively just lying again about things he has no knowledge of and no interest in, making polite inquiry as to my real intentions so he can report back honestly. That wouldn't serve his purpose of making every tiny opportunity, sorry, that wouldn't serve his purpose of taking every tiny opportunity to sully my name. He's as dishonest as they come. Extremely low integrity. Considering, <coughs> considering he has $3,000 to waste on just trying to get publicity, arguing with someone famous or respected enough to raise his own profile for having, debate, for having debated them, you might have expected him to buy a new air track and timing gates. But clearly he has no interest whatsoever or curiosity for testing things properly. That wastewater pipe he employed by the leaf blower and the far too massively larger than necessary pipe section serving as ultra poor gliders was beyond bad. How he had the nerve to even call that an air track is beyond my imagination. In fact, I cannot fathom how his own fans didn't say, oh, come on, Gary, this is ridiculous. How can we criticise Brozo when you're relying on this wobbly, unpredictable thing with parts spinning round and round and oscillating all over the place? Maybe they did, but I doubt it. They are far too loyal to their hero and master to say, what a pile of crap. OK, uh, forgive any typos. I need binoculars to see my screen. Well, I've amended some of my typos, which <laughs> leap out like a sore thumb when I put it in something like this with larger letters. OK, sorry about doing it this way. I couldn't think of another way. Come to think about it, if YouTube is so buggy, so pathetic, so fussy about every tiny word that we say in comments that it won't simply won't let you post it and won't tell you what it is that's wrong with your post won't allow it to be posted if it's that buggy then perhaps amanda's channel was removed for some similarly innocent reason that she is unaware of uh, it is wrong I, I concede it is wrong that they won't bloody well tell a person what's wrong with their post or or their videos or whatever. It, it, it's, it's madness, isn't it? Yeah, I wonder if me saying these words will get me blocked. <laughs> you don't know, do you? <laughs> I've got to edit this together now. This is the procedure, Gary, if ever you want it. Oh, I'm sure he knows how to do it. He just can't be bothered. Okay, thank you for listening. Sorry for messing you about. Okay, bye.